to stay comfortable inside Riverside today. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12, first at 5. Well, what needs to happen to get Augusta's overgrown grass and weeds under control? Just ahead, how the city is using your tax dollars to find a solution. But first, weather is top of mind for everyone. With so many events happening across the CSRA this weekend, our first alert chief meteorologist here with us at Border Bash now. And Riley, it feels pretty great outside today for us. Absolutely. Well, beautiful weather out here today. I will say we've been looking at a couple of raindrops falling from the sky, but it, it is not much. I'm out here in no rain jacket whatsoever, and we're having a great time out here on the outfield. And gates just open at 5 o'clock, and you can buy tickets here. You can buy them online. They're $15. VIP tickets a little bit more. Uh, you can see they have a great little kid zone, so they have a blow-up slide, bounce house. They got a little pitch machine, and then they have a stage set up for live music. We're going to have the Mike Veal Band, uh, Jay and the Bootleggers, and also the mason jars. They're going to be playing tonight, so a lot of fun out there for us. Now, as far as the weather goes, we are looking at some cloud cover that's kind of exiting us here in Augusta. I'm looking up, and I can actually see a lot of blue sky that way, but we still have just this little bit of cloud cover overhead that is producing just a quick little sprinkle. But for the most part, we are going to stay dry this evening, so head on down to SRP Park. Say hi to us here at the tent. We're set up just outside of right field. Temperature is very comfortable. We're at 75 degrees right now. This cannot be beat for this time of year. We are going and take this uh, 10 times out of 10 we can get it and luckily some sun is being reported out there at Bush Field. Now if you are heading out to SRP Park tonight we are looking at the chance or just uh, very comfortable temperatures and even if you're not heading to SRP maybe you're heading out to those high school football games still around kickoff we should be in the 70s second half though will fall into the 60s so a fairly comfortable night on tap and uh, we're going to see some relatively cooler temperatures by tomorrow morning waking up Saturday most likely in the low 60s so uh, this will it's going to feel great for us as we do start off the weekend. Now, later into the weekend by Sunday, that is going to be our next chance for rain. We'll have more coming up on that. All right, thanks for keeping us updated out there, Riley. Well, today, human remains were found near Riverwatch Parkway on Corey Road. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office says they were found just before 11 this morning. No word yet on whose remains those are, but they are being sent to the GBI for an autopsy. We will continue following this story and bring you any updates. We're learning more about what police say led up to a Grovetown High School teacher being suspended. According to an incident report, junior ROTC instructor Major Cecile Williams was speaking to students who appeared to, not, to, appear to be talking and not paying attention. The report says school video shows Williams walking over to a freshman cadet and slapping him and then pushing him out of line. Williams was arrested and charged with simple battery for this incident. She is still suspended tonight as the school's HR department investigates. Well, from overgrown medians to knee-high weeds and cemeteries so overgrown you can barely see grave markers, Augusta has issues with keeping vegetation under control. That's why today the city held a workshop meeting to discuss who is responsible for these eyesores and what can be done about it. Our Sydney Hood was there and tells us how it went. Overgrown grass and weeds are a constant and ugly problem city leaders hear about daily. When taxpayers call to complain, it can go to several departments, from 311 to engineering to parks and rec. And that headache is why city leaders are talking about merging everything into one department to make the growing grass a little less of a growing pain. Just would like the answer. Why aren't they doing anything? Will they do something? It's our responsibility to fund programs, and it's our responsibility to put pen to paper to make sure that that uh, processes are in place that get us to a better service delivery. Now, before anything gets set in stone, commissioners need to hear from each department to figure out what this one department will look like. And judging from the booklet handed out at today's workshop, there's still a lot more to be talked about. Coming up all new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, the growing need for a solution, what that could possibly look like, and why neighbors want more than a Band-Aid fix. 
All right, thanks for that, Sydney. A new grocery store is coming to Augusta at the site of the former Whole Foods supermarket. It's called Fresh Take and will reportedly open next June. As you can see, the location near Bonefish Grill already has decals on the window announcing the space. The company says on top of groceries, they'll have takeout, catering options, plus a beer and wine bar. You can also expect sushi, specialty cheeses, seafood, and much more. Investigators in Columbia, South Carolina, cracking down on two correctional officers who are accused of selling contraband to inmates. At Lee Correctional Institution, investigators say they found shanks in two employees' offices, as well as narcotics and cell phones, which were allegedly sold for upwards of $6,000 to inmates. The two officers were allegedly working together. It's believed that one inmate possessing a contraband cell phone orchestrated a shooting, and another inmate used a phone for exchange. Extortion. Both officers are charged with providing prisoners contraband and criminal conspiracy. While most abortions in South Carolina are now prohibited after around six weeks, the state's new law does allow more time for sexual assault survivors. But the law also requires patients who seek abortions for this reason have their names and contact information reported to law enforcement. Our State House reporter Mary Green explains how sheriffs are responding. In cases of rape and incest, the law requires the physician report these crimes to the sheriff's office in the county where the abortion was performed within 24 hours of the procedure. Well, if we're going to try to deter those crimes, if we're going to try to punish those crimes and to hold the criminals accountable, then law enforcement needs the evidence in order to pursue those things. It's not giving them the choice of who and when their experience is disclosed to. Three clinics in South Carolina provide abortions in Columbia, Charleston, and Greenville. That means it's up to the sheriffs in Richland, Charleston, and Greenville counties to determine what they do when they receive these reports. Charleston County Sheriff Kristen Graziano is the state's only female sheriff. Her department says it's resumed receiving these reports, as it did last year under the state's previous abortion law. And like it did under that law, CCSO says it will follow the victim's wishes on whether they want to pursue this investigation further or not. The Richland County Sheriff's Department encourages all crime victims to report them, saying it will continue to investigate sexual assault cases with the utmost care and concern for the dignity of victims. RCSD also noted it, too, would not pursue these investigations further if the survivor did not want that. And in Greenville County, the Sheriff's Office says it'll handle these cases with the same standard procedures it uses for all criminal complaints, conducting them in a thorough and timely manner. The limited exception in this law for sexual assault survivors allows them to get an abortion in South Carolina up to 12 weeks into their pregnancy. That's a narrower time frame than under the state's previous fetal heartbeat law, the one that the Supreme Court struck down earlier this year, which gave them up to 20 weeks. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green. And as part of this law, doctors also must inform the pregnant, pregnant woman before they perform the abortion that they're legally required to make this report to law enforcement and disclose the woman's name and contact information. Switching gears here. Boxes. An estimated 100,000 people will make their way to downtown Augusta for Arts in the Heart starting now. The event just opened its gates at 5 o'clock and will go until 9 this evening. Our Hallie Turner is live there in Hallie. How do the crowds look so far? Well, well, it's just getting started, and you know, you mentioned there's over a hundred. There were over a hundred thousand people here last year. Miss Berta, right here, is one of them. And Miss Berta, we're going to take a walk and let you guys see all of these vendors behind us because Miss Berta, I found her this morning when I got out here, and you're still here. You enjoyed this, so tell me a little bit about what you've been able to see, whether it's art, jewelry, woodwork. Kind of tell me what you've seen today. Well, I've seen a lot today. I've seen a how many vendors had came out to Augusta, Georgia to support us and a lot of uh, food, uh, court people. Augusta, please come on out and, um, and give and, that support. And give us, us that yeah, support and so take that deep take, breath. And take a deep breath and come on out. Chad, did you see that food? The food is good. Look, behind Hector Girl, right now, let me tell you we're, we're it, was the, it was off the chain. So tell me, you're on their way to the food court now. Yes, so yes, what are one of those favorite things that you, you saw today? Chad, I'd be saying that a pork rind skin, whatever they have on, on Facebook. But let me tell you something, I'm going to try it today. Come on out, whatever food you've seen on Facebook, Come on out. Awesome. Ms. Berta, thank you so much. Okay. You enjoy your time.
So, like Miss Berta said, they've got food, they've got vendors, it's all uh, all age friendly, and you know, if you want some of that food, you can come on out now, they've got it hot and ready to go, and coming up at 5.30, we're going to actually take a deeper look into that with um, some of those at the Philippine Tent, they've been fixing noodles, they've been fixing barbecue on the stick, so it's a, it's a fun event, but everyone really loves the food, so I've been trying it all day, so we're going to try some on camera. Thank you all. And you heard Miss Berta. You got to get out there. You got to check it out. Obviously, as Hallie said, the food is incredible out there. And we're just hoping that she brings some back to the station for everyone to share. That's the rule. When you go out there and cover these events, you have to come back with food, Hallie. Okay, I'll, I'll try. I'll try. I'll do my best. All right, sounds good. We'll check back in with you in just a bit. Thanks for that. Well, again, the fun goes tonight until 9 o'clock. Tomorrow, Arts in the Heart runs from 11 a.m. through 9, a, uh, 9 p.m. And then on Sunday, 11 to 6 o'clock, it does cost $15 to get in. But that pass gets you in for the entire weekend. More details on road closures and parking, you, that can be found on our website, WRDW.com. A flash flooding, trapping people in buildings and washing cars and mud down the street. Just ahead, how extensive flooding hit an unexpected city. And we are live here at SRP Park. We're going to take a look at the forecast for tonight and also that weekend outlook just after break. Time and M Jack Foundation Repair. Bowl happening now. It's one of our area's biggest rivalry, the Georgia Bulldogs versus the South Carolina Gamecocks. We have First Alert Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale out there in the field. He's the only one able to defend Georgia today because Meredith is not here with me. Riley, you have something on your shirt out there I'm going to need you to get rid of. Hey. <laughs> Uh, we can we can set a light on some bets for Saturday tomorrow if you want to, Will. I know you're a South Carolina grad, Georgia grad, so uh, we can make a little wager. But, I might lose uh, some money. We got plenty, I got plenty of Georgia fans that have showed up today, and it's looking great out there uh, for the rest of this evening. So there's plenty of time to still come out. Gates just opened at 5 o'clock. Tickets are $15. We had one tiny little shower that showed up right when we showed up, but other than, uh, that has since passed, and we're looking at sunshine right now. So looking at our weather headlines, we're going to continue to see nice weather weather through tonight tomorrow unfortunately sunday still looks like a good bet for us to see some rainfall so if you're trying to pick one of those two weekend days to get outside saturday definitely looks like the drier option but once we get past sunday all next week looks fantastic we're going to see some cooler mornings and also some very pleasant afternoons here's a live look over srp park and you can see our temperatures right down here in augusta are 75 degrees so feeling very comfortable and uh, no need for the jacket anything like that tonight and luckily the rain is kind of moving south of augusta so here's kind of here's a live look at our radar network still showing where that stalled front is producing some showers across the region but luckily not going to impact us here in augusta for the rest of the night this rain is south of i-20 so and you can you can see it's very light. The shower that passed overhead for us was just a couple raindrops. Nothing that's much. So over the next couple of hours, we'll stay in the mid-70s here at SRP. And then once that sun goes down, it should be a quick drop into the 60s. Uh, so a comfortable night up ahead. And you can use the same forecast if you're heading out to uh, Arts in the Heart or those Friday night football games. Now, Arts in the Heart, remember, does continue through the weekend. So if you can't make it to downtown Augusta tonight, Saturday is going to be picture-perfect festival weather. We're going to see our highs below average, most likely low to mid-80s. By Sunday, though, that's going to be a decent opportunity for some rain. So a heads up, that could impact them. Unfortunately, hearts in the heart for the last day. Low temperatures tonight going to feel pretty comfortable. By tomorrow morning, we should be waking up near 60 degrees, believe it or not. So one of the cooler mornings we've seen over the past couple weeks. All day long Saturday, we're just going to hang on to a few passing clouds. As far as temperatures go, we should be in the 60s early on, 70s by midday, and then eventually working our way into the 80s uh, late to the afternoon tomorrow. But below average, this time of year, usually our highs are in the upper 80s. So uh, most likely 5 degrees below average for most spots. So feeling very comfortable. And as far as our weekend outlook here at Augusta, remember Sunday, the temperature doesn't change, but the rain chances will be going up. And that's going to be thanks to just a weak area of low pressure passing through. And as far as the timing of the rain Sunday, it could be impacting us as soon as Sunday morning. So heading out to those church services early into the day Sunday may want to have that umbrella close by. Here's the way it's looking our hour by hour. So for this evening, tonight, we're clearing things out. Should be a beautiful start to our Saturday. You can see that rain does stay west of us tomorrow. So maybe if you're heading up to Athens, there's a stray shower during game time. So may just want to have the poncho uh, just in case. But you can see this rain does get closer towards us by Sunday, passing through in the morning, through around midday. And then we do start to dry out once we get 
uh, later into our Sunday night. And then the really nice weather does show up by next week. Here's a look at that seven-day forecast. So next week, remember, we get some cooler mornings, upper 50s, low 60s. And we do look to save mostly dry past Sunday. So a nice little dry week for us after a fairly wet pattern so far this week. All right, thanks for that, Riley. In Atlanta, flash flooding yesterday swept away cars, flooded buildings, and prompted more than 30 water rescues. It's being described as three hours worth of heavy rain coming down in as little as 15 minutes. Chelsea Beanfor shows us how many people were totally unprepared for this to happen. moments inside a Clark Atlanta University dorm Thursday afternoon as flash flooding caused chaos across campus. The water rising so high in some areas it fully submerged cars. Oh, right. It's just turning. The water was moving the cars. That's why it looks so really bad right there. Matthew Kiner works near the campus and was coming back from his lunch break when the water began rising on Parsons Street. How high was the water? Like five feet. It was five feet, seriously. The students, was just, it was just crazy. Like, they had to sit there and watch their cars go down in that water like that. One of those students was Ejon Woods. My car is completely submerged, and now this is what she looks like. The sophomore now scrambling to figure out a new mode of transportation, along with many other students whose cars look like this, littered with debris and dripping with water and mud. I'm a college student. This is my only means of transportation. I don't know what to do from here. This happened last year, but it didn't happen to me, so I suppose, you know, it's a different feeling once you experience this kind of situation. In the Georgia Aquarium also having to shut down yesterday after water started leaking through the roof. It's back open today, though. Also in Atlanta, the DeKalb County Board of Health is alerting the public after three people test positive for the West Nile virus. A human case of the virus hasn't been confirmed in that area since 2020. This virus is caught from mosquitoes but is rarely fatal. West Nile virus and COVID have similar symptoms including headaches, body aches, and fever. The county says none of the three cases are related to one another. Well, millions of dollars in renovations coming to a military museum in our region. We'll show you what's being added coming up next. First, over a Cadillac. At Davis Appliance and Furniture, we have the best deals in town. It's the perfect time to update your living space with a new sectional or get that big TV you've always wanted. We offer no credit needed financing and delivery options to meet your needs. For the top brands at the lowest prices, visit Davis Appliance and Furniture. Cabinet ready shine. Rewash. Not in my house. Upgrade to Cascade Platinum Plus. Dare to dish differently. Davis on Dean's Ridge, your one stop shop for everything home. Update your bedroom suite or mattress set today. We offer no credit needed financing and delivery options to meet your needs. For the top brands at the lowest prices, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. Several million dollars in renovations are coming to the Congressional Medal of Honor Museum on the USS Yorktown in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. The goal is to make the museum more interactive and teach people of all ages the importance of our military. Ray Urania shows us more. In true Ranger fashion, I'm going to get us started. <laughs> With this tomahawk swing, renovations at the Congressional Medal of Honor Museum are underway. Leaders say the $3.5 million makeover will make the museum more interactive. It will also tie in the artifacts that are currently on the Yorktown. For example, the, the B-25. General Doolittle, who led the raid to Tokyo, was a Medal of Honor recipient. The Medal of Honor is the nation's highest award for military valor. I received my medal in 2011 for my actions on Memorial Day 2008. On that day, Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie saved the lives of two injured Army Rangers in Afghanistan. They're throwing grenades, keep your heads down, keep watching the corners. Well, on one of my checks to go back and check on him, another grenade must have came over, and it was sitting right behind him. I reached over, I grabbed it, and I attempted to throw it away from him, and as I opened my hand, it exploded. Leaders say the updated museum will feature some of the sights and sounds of the wars recipients fought in. Examples include a Huey helicopter experience and the sounds of drums from the Civil War. Drums were very important during the Civil War because they didn't have cell phones. And how the drum beat was done told the soldiers what to do. Peachy says the museum will let them add the names of future recipients and tell their stories. He also hopes it will share some of the values that they share. It's more than just an award. 
much more than a medal with a ribbon. It's a symbol that any of us is capable of great things. And officials hope to invite as many recipients of the medal as possible for the soft opening, which will be just before Memorial Day next May. Earlier this week, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp announcing he is suspending the state's gas tax amid 40-year high inflation. But a question some may have been wondering is, why don't these prices drop immediately? Well, it's important to know that the fuel tax is actually a tax on distributors and not consumers. This means that the price you're seeing at the pump now reflects fuel from distributors before the suspension started. We should see the prices start to go down this weekend, and the tax suspension lasts through early next month. Well, we are still live here at SRP Park. We're going to have a look at the forecast for you coming up just after a short break. transfers from savings, when you get a low balance alert, it's easier to say yes to fun. If that sounds good, try Regions Life Banking. Stay ready for the event life. Regions Life can brace the event life. I'm Mike Hoff. Vibes. Well, some good news here to pass along. An Aiken couple heard on the news that someone in Aiken hit the jackpot and needed to check their ticket. So they took a second look, and they were the winners of $200,000. Excuse me. The Palmetto Cash 5 ticket was bought at the three-way food mart on Silver Bluff Road. Our Riley Hale out at Border Bash with us now. And what a better way to spend those lottery ticket winnings than at Border Bash right now, Riley. Absolutely. Well, a big congratulations to that big winner there off of uh, Silver Bluff. And, hey, the SRP Park's going to be a great place to come at by tonight. We're looking at uh, temperatures staying in the 70s and 60s. We have finally some clear skies overhead. We had one tiny little shower that popped over us uh, by about 4.30, but that's since cleared out. We're finally starting to break the clouds from today across Augusta, but still hanging on some cloud cover south of I-20. But luckily, staying dry for our outdoor plans this evening and to tonight. Whether you're heading out to SRP, Arts in the Heart, across the river we also have those uh friday night football games so temperatures right now in the 70s for most spots if you are heading out to those high school games uh, we should still be in the 70s around kickoff at 7 30 and then by the second half we are going to drop those tents most likely into the 60s so feeling pretty comfortable out across most spots heading into the weekend remember sunday we do have a decent chance of rain but drying out next week all right thanks riley stick with us we'll have more coming up after a short break <laughs> 